Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to another one of those exploration videos where I break out the iPad, I do a bit of drawing and we explore an interesting topic. So I wanted to explore how do we defend ourselves and the reason this topic came up was well there's a little bit of backstory so I'll get into that in a moment but this video is also a companion video to an earlier video I did which I will point you to above and that's where we had a look at enemies we had a look at who is your enemy as per your sign so if you miss that one you'll definitely want to check that out and this one should follow on quite nicely because we'll have a look at how you defend yourself and from that video we got some great comments i'm going to bring one of them up on the screen i think it got the most number of likes Everybody loved this comment, including me. As soon as I read it, I thought, oh, why didn't I say that? That is so wise and that is so brilliant and clever. So we have a viewer from Hawaii, Aloha. And this viewer says, it seems counterintuitive, but great greatness is never achieved without enemies. They can be our greatest teachers. Absolutely. So we're going to take a look at that in today's episode this feeds nicely into some of the things that we're going to discuss here the other thing that came up in last time's video as well was that one person did mention that I'm encouraging people to be passive and I thought that was a very interesting comment as well on that front I was reading a book by Stuart Wilde and I found an answer to that comment and Stuart Wilde in his book I think it's called life was never meant to be a struggle I've taken a screenshot of the page and I'll put it up by my side so that you can read the content here but he talks about the fact that we need to avoid conflict and he says, remember, only the fool stands and fights, the sage walks away. And that is, to me, I think the ultimate wisdom. That is what we need to do. It's an interesting one. Sometimes we can't always walk away. There is also the concept of running away, you know, because if we run away, then the problem will come and find us in another form or in another person or you know if it's some karmic thing that we have to deal with then it will find you you know it's like until we learn the lesson until we learn how to handle it or learn how to deal with it or learn how to defend ourselves so that is what we're going to explore in today's topic and another reason why this one came up was um, because one of the viewers had shown me a video where someone was basically really trashing the profession of astrology and saying you know uh, that that why would anyone become an astrologer or why would anyone consult an astrologer and all this kind of thing and that's what really got me thinking and it got me thinking about enemies so what I'll do is I'll bring up one of my fancy little chart things here I'm just going to make sure that this is all blank yes there's no scribbles anywhere I should have done that before hitting play how are you all by the way I hope you're all doing good wherever you are if the cosmic weather is a bit oh there we go I've got to erase all this if the cosmic weather is a bit challenging just hang in there we're going to have better transits coming up I know what it's like to yeah just have a time where everything is uh is difficult I had I had one of those times too recently but now it's it's done my karma got paid I think I, I paid it uh, let's talk about karma so I'm going to hit record here and I'm going to talk about 
There we go. It's recording. I'll do a little star. There we go, so I can sync it up uh, later in editing. But yeah, I, I started thinking about enemies. Okay, so that's here. So, I, so this whole thing about enemies. And I was thinking about, oh yes, this also reminds me of Stuart Wilde. There's another quote he did, which I want to bring up and I'll see if I can find it. There it is. I've got it. Good. Yes, your ability to handle conflict. Yep, good. I've got it. Sorry about that. I should have looked that one up before hitting record as well. I'm organized now. I've got everything I need. Okay, so what happened was one of you sent me a video by someone who was saying astrology is a silly profession and it's not scientific and this and that and all these things. So I started thinking about, okay, so how would I defend myself? How would I, what, how, where would I begin? What would I say? And, you know, I've had to do a bit of this in life anyway, because I used to be in a sort of normal corporate type situation for a long time, for about 19 years. And there were definitely some friends of mine who probably still think I'm crazy <laughs> and uh, what is she doing you know she's gone off and decided to be an astrologer and what's that all about and and I started thinking about okay well I started thinking about the sixth house and I started thinking about is this a sixth house issue and we covered the sixth house in that video that I mentioned at the start where I said we can look at enemies and I started thinking about you know, so enemies are here, let's say. But is this where we defend ourselves? And on deep contemplation of this topic, I realized that no, there, I, I, we might need to defend ourselves while we're in the sixth house. Yes, we might need to. That is true. But if someone is coming at me and saying that my whole profession is a joke or whatever, I started thinking about it and I started thinking that person is not my enemy. And I really started contemplating the ninth house. And I thought this person just has a different opinion to me. Okay. And that's all it is they just have a different opinion that person is definitely not an enemy to me at all uh, you know they just have a different opinion and their opinion is perfectly valid and when you start thinking this way it deflates the whole situation and that person they're no longer an enemy at all and i've got a quote by stuart wilde which defined this and it's funny because around the time when I was thinking about all of this which was several weeks ago I happened to be reading this book and he's got this section here your ability to handle conflict and he says conflict is always just a divergence of opinions and I thought yes that is so true but the thing is so often we think that conflict is here in the sixth house and it is in the sixth house okay so there is conflict here there sometimes is a need to defend ourselves but then opinions belong here in the ninth so then this got me thinking about okay we've got a special relationship here between the sixth house and the ninth house and when i started contemplating this I was like, oh, wow, this is really fascinating because the contemplation of these two houses together and then the viewer's comment here, it seems counterintuitive, but greatness is never achieved without enemies. This got me really thinking and I'm like, okay, now this is really, really interesting. So by Bhavat Bhavam, What's the relationship like between six and nine? And this is where things get fascinating. So if we draw a line between, so I'm just gonna do that and get rid of that. 
there we go if I draw a line between houses six and nine okay I'm going to draw that line there and that's four places away and then I'm going to draw this line here and you'll notice that this is 10 places away so when we have something that is 10 places away what kind of a relationship is it it is and now I'm going to use the word industrial and this got me going down a very interesting road because I started to think about well of course yeah we've got the military industrial complex don't we and this is very interesting to me because I've often said that war there's a big connection between war and the sixth house recently on patreon i was teaching a class and i was talking about how well-worn phrases cliches that are used over decades and decades they are very often astrologically true and one such phrase that i forgot to mention in my patreon class but it's very appropriate here is that uh, an army marches on its stomach I'm pretty sure that's the phrase I'll google it and make sure but an army marches on its stomach something like that now that is makes perfect sense here because the sixth house is also a house of service and we serve in the army and it's also the house of the stomach as well isn't that incredible so yeah this thing of military industrial complex the relationship between the two and I do believe it is this military industrial complex thing that say for example a country like the United States has used to make itself powerful and great in the world um, one of the things that I also started thinking about was well there are a few things here I mean again well before I get to the America thing so I started thinking about when have I had to defend myself in life in my small tiny little life you know I haven't done too much yeah I've done some jobs and moved country whatever but like I haven't done very much but in my tiny life people have come at me often because I'm pretty peaceful and I'm pretty happy most of the time and some people have hated that they have absolutely despised that they see that wow she's just this peaceful happy person and some people just hate it and they come in and they really try to attack me or verbally um, and try to sort of wobble the tightrope and get me to fall off kind of thing uh, so I've had a lot of that and that, that got me thinking about how I've had to defend my peaceful way of life and then that got me thinking about a country like America again the United States where I know in a lot of things they've said over many years that they want to defend their peaceful way of life you know isn't isn't that interesting um yeah so all these things i started thinking about and this whole thing of yeah it seems counterintuitive but greatness is never achieved without enemies i also started thinking about with the ninth um sagittarius of course is originally here and Virgo is originally here when I've studied the charts of prime ministers and presidents and you know people who lead countries I do typically see that they've got some kind of strong Sagittarius or they've got some kind of strong Virgo in their charts 
so that's the ten places away relationship. What about the four places away? Well, that to me, and I'm going to use the word, is emotional. And I think this is where the confusion happens. Because it's when we get emotional that we perceive this person or this other as being an enemy. But they're actually not, you see. And so that, I think, is what I have managed to do uh, in life is I haven't been too emotional with my enemies if you know what I mean. And um, one of the reasons for that is, uh, I think, yeah, my my ninth lord is here is debilitated and I've got a watery sixth house. It, it, you know, I, I don't get too emotional. I could get emotional actually there in the sixth, couldn't I? Yeah, but I think with my ninth anyway, I don't uh, react too much because that lord there is debilitated sometimes a debilitation yeah it can be a really good thing it doesn't have to be a bad thing it can serve us very well so never feel bad about any of your debilitated lords or any of your combust placements or any of your afflictions or any of those things i was just sharing with uh, a student on patreon in one of the comments that you know um, whenever you see any one of those types of things don't stop. Don't stop at that place and go, oh, well, this is bad. That's the end. No, keep, keep looking, keep thinking, keep contemplating. You will find the light uh, that is just behind the difficulty or the challenge or the illusion, right? So, oh, well, look at that. We're at 17 minutes. I've waffled on so much. But this was the kind of thing that I wanted to set up here for this thing of defense that we can just see um you know and i mean look, let's not forget right that this these enemies i always see these dishtana um houses as being the houses of the greatest illusions okay so again when we touch on a country like the united states of america and I, i'm not meaning to be political or any of that guys I, i'm a huge america fan i hope people know that uh, i can't wait to visit hawaii and you know new york and california and all the bits in between and I, it's a for me it's just such an exciting place i wanted to live there one time so i'm not being um, harsh on america but i will say that you know things like we look at this military industrial complex line here okay the this industrialization of um defending you know a way of life a way of life uh and perceived i'll put here perceived or portray, portrayed enemies you know um and and that this and that this is profitable okay having wars is profitable we can kind of literally see that here i mean i could talk more about this but I, i'm not going to get too into it because um i want to get into the little mini bits because my favorite thing is to look at an individual i'm not very interested in looking at countries and wars and things like that but what I will say is that there is a relationship, uh, a special relationship between six and nine, and people do commercialize, industrialize this relationship, and they do create wars and things like that. But then when I think of these Dushtana houses, right, I also see that they are illusions. And again, coming back to America, but not wanting to be political, I would like to say that, you know, things like um, weapons of mass destruction and stuff like that, yeah, they, they weren't real, were they? So, um, yeah, it's all just fascinating. And, and it, it's, it's, it's written here in, in the stars. We can see how life plays out here on this planet. And the movement of things uh, is, is, is all here. Anyway, let's take a look at the mini reports. Um, have I covered off my notes here? I think I have um there, there are other areas of defense so yes we have defending our opinions how we want to lead how we want to be how we want to teach teaching uh, is here as well very much 
There's also psychology. The realm of psychology contains um, a lot, so much content around defense, defense mechanisms, defense mechanisms. And I've got a definition of that here on the screen. Defense mechanisms are unconscious strategies whereby people protect themselves from anxious thoughts or feelings. Yeah, so that is all very interesting as well. Um, look at that. I mean, you can look at defense, not against an enemy, but just in terms of what you've got going on within you, which is the ultimate thing to do, isn't it? Anyway, this is my little ramble of this topic. But if you'd like to see, we're going to step into the mini reports. This is my favorite thing to do. I like to work with an individual and explore these things in that way. So come with me on a journey. We're going to start with Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, Aries, we're going to take a look at how you defend yourself. How do you do that? So we're going to have a look here in the ninth house. And we're also just going to touch on what kind of enemy do you have? Okay, so if you missed that video, I'll point to it again. I don't know if it'll come up again on the screen, but I did have a look at enemies last time. And I'm just going to summarize that video by saying you've got mercurial sort of enemies. Right? How do you defend yourself against them? Well, for you, Aries, knowledge is power. What you need to do is you need to study. You need to study up on lots of things and you need to become really smart and really knowledgeable. And that is going to be something that will impress your mercurial friends or enemies or whoever they are that knowledge is power for you you are going to want to be more knowledgeable you're going to want to learn more know more it'll suit you as well to quote higher authorities that will be a good thing for you you can definitely do that you can also line up higher authorities if you need to so so network with people or inform people above you or even a parent or something like that but there could be just like a psychological thing and it's like they don't need to be present when you're defending yourself it's not that it's not like you need a tribe of people with you but it's like you need the emotional support of people above you or people in positions of authority it's like you need the emotional or psychological support of these people and that will fill you with confidence and you will be able to defend yourself, present your case, do what you have to do. So that is how I am seeing things for you, Aries. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now how are you going to defend yourself? Okay, well, if we're having a look at who your enemies are, just a quick little view into who you're defending yourself against, quite possibly, it could be for you, friends. But for you, I'm also looking here at your ascendant and I'm seeing family. And I'm also seeing siblings here. Could be people connected in with childhood as well so childhood contacts and there could be something about you needing to defend your career choice or what it is you want to do in the world perhaps you have had to defend yourself around that and 
This is a tricky one because at the beginning of this career path that you take, success might be slow going and it can be these people who judge you okay they're like well why are you doing that profession you know like it's taking so long or and it's kind of like yeah i got here defending yourself is about power and might that you will build over time through discipline and the thing that you're going to want to do I've got here, your defense is success through worldly or material achievements. Worldly or material achievements. And the thing that you will learn, Taurus, is that you are never a prophet in your own home. They won't take you seriously until you have the big success, until you have the worldly material achievements, until you've got that stuff going on. They might be like, well, you know, they'll judge you or something or, or that won't feel good to you. But if you're a powerhouse in terms of your career and you're doing great, well, then yeah, you probably may not need to defend yourself too much. Uh, but until you get there, you might be having to defend things like your career choice, your, you know, what it is you want to do in the world. You might find yourself having to defend that. It, and the other thing is it could take time to build it as well. So these are some things to bear in mind there, Taurus. All right. Well, thank you so much. For tuning in we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so who are you defending yourself against well it could be hidden enemies these could be people that are hard to read or they're not being very upfront about what they think but in terms of defense I've got here, you are very equipped to defend yourself on your own. Uh, so there's two things going on here. You can actually really be very independent. Really stand on your own. Equally though, you can also get support from your networks or from friends. Or contacts. Or I'm going to say soul tribe friends. So it's quite interesting when you defend yourself, you're either doing it on your own and you're having to be quite innovative or you're having to. And I remember from that enemies video that I did for you, your hidden enemies. Yeah, we've got mind games in here, don't we? I remember that now. But it's kind of like so it the, the, there could be um, you're developing your intuition. Through these situations. So these situations are actually getting you to build your intuition. The other thing that you might want to reach for as you defend yourself is psychology. Now, definitely don't use psychology to label anyone. Definitely a terrible idea. And, or to tell them, well, I've just watched all these videos and you're this. Definitely don't do that. But like, 
studying the psychology is going to empower you because you will yes absolutely you will be able to predict their next moves okay psychology is a predictive tool just like astrology we can use this beautiful framework of astrology to predict a lot of things and be in the know and be one step ahead and we can definitely use astrology to do that you you might actually like to use astrology uh, to do that okay but you can very much use psychology to do that as well so I would say yeah you can Enemies that come into your life are basically going to get you to be more independent, have a stronger intuition and psychology. You're going to learn a lot of psychology. No one is going to be able to pull the wall over your eyes because you're going to figure it out, Gemini. You are, these enemies are, yeah, look at that. Our, our wonderful uh, viewer who said the quote, it seems counterintuitive, but greatness is never achieved without enemies. They can be our greatest teachers. Look at that. We've got a lot of teaching happening here. Okay, so your enemy is your greatest teacher. Yeah, enemy equals teacher. They're going to make you very strong, very sharp, very intuitive. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so who are your enemies? Well, your enemies could be, now I'm just going to do a quick little overview here. Uh, they could be very academic people. They could be very intellectual people. And how you can defend yourself is by finding the common ground between you both okay uh, by showing that well hey we're so similar you know and that can be pretty amazing uh, because yes we've got jupiter here okay but guess what we've got the biggest kind of jupiter right here we've got the all is one jupiter here love this so it's kind of like you're expanding and you're going to envelope this enemy of yours and you're going to be like you know expand you're going to envelope them you're going to be like well yes i see your little argument there and uh you know what actually fits in it's actually a smaller component of this bigger argument right here you know um, this is where Jupiter expands and yeah there's something about you defending yourself well I mean you're defending yourself with a big picture view or a bigger picture view okay you've got the bigger picture at your disposal you can see where whatever they're trying to do actually just fits in with all that you already know or all that you already are or you know you're connected in with this bigger picture here so that's pretty incredible yeah this is strong there's something here about you expanding and enveloping your your enemy you're embracing them you're taking them in you're saying well yes actually I agree with what you're saying you know and they do say that I've read an article about how to handle master manipulators and they say that yeah one way that we, which is counterintuitive that that's the that's the phrase of this video uh, I've used that many times we've got that in that quote there but they say it's counterintuitive but to disarm a master manipulator you should agree with them yes there we go your defense whoops is in agreement 
There we go. Show them that, well, we actually agree, you know, and that way you just, you'll just smother them. Yeah. What, what are they going to be able to fight? They can't. Oh, I like that cancer. I think that should suit your style as well. Uh, I've also got here, you know, that you don't have to do anything. You've got this beautiful moksha energy in here and the moksha people here, you, you don't have to do much. You can, you can let God come in and, and bat for you. You know, you can, you can genuinely just ask God, look, hey, I need help. <laughs> and God will come in and sort the whole thing out. You almost don't need to do anything. So there's that approach as well. But with that approach, I mean, yeah, whether, whether you're really doing that or are you just using that to avoid or run away, which you don't want. But if you are doing that, the problem will come again. So you'll know. <laughs> you'll know whether you're doing it right is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, because it comes again. I know because my problems always come again. <laughs> That's what happens with me. All right. Well, thank you so much, Cancer. Um, we are going to welcome Leo. Hi, Leo. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now just a recap on who your enemies are. Oh, yeah. you got these big enemies right here. You could be, they could be corporations. They could be huge. I remember you, Leo, from that last video I did. But now who and what do you need to be? Well, now for you, you need to be, the remedy is when you are defending yourself, you need to be yourself. Uh, and I know this is one of those annoying answers where you're like, oh, that's, that's really not helping me. Uh, I know. Um, so I've got to hear you have to be yourself. You have to be your full self. You have to express your uniqueness. You have to be unique. Um, definitely don't shrink and definitely don't dull your shine. So don't shrink, don't dull your shine. I've got here, yeah, leaders stand alone. And in your one, Leo, I found a most beautiful quote. I was inspired to quote. This is a quote I heard a long time ago, and I just love it. And I'm going to write it out for you because I think it's just so good. I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. And that's by Maya Angelou. And she was, as many of us know, a civil rights activist. That is the quote for you, Leo. I haven't got a quote for anyone else. I just have one for you. Of course, you're going to be special. You are Leo. You are the lion. You are the leader, all that stuff. But yeah, here you are Aries. And that's also the leader who stands alone. So really enemies are, you see that, that when I said you have to be yourself, enemies are training, how, training you how to be yourself in the face of, and in the face of huge opposition. The opposition that you face could be massive, but it is training you how to be yourself. It's a training ground and you are getting stronger. You are going to master this stuff. So Leo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm checking on the timer. Okay. Defending yourself. So what have we got here? Now, who are you defending yourself against? What I've got here is for you, Virgo, it's quite interesting. You're going to be defending yourself against individuals. 
I think if I'm remembering right in the last video, gosh, it was a long time ago, but um, I said something about strangers, didn't I? But I've got here individuals, could be siblings, older siblings, soul tribe, connections, friends, networks, networking, people, groups, could be groups. But here's how you'll defend yourself. You're going to defend yourself by incredible loyalty to your values and principles. And these are values and principles that you learnt from childhood. Now, if you didn't have a good childhood or learn these things in childhood, what would you have liked to learn or know? That is something that you're going to have to figure out and fill in those blanks. The more filled in those blanks are, the stronger and better you'll be at defending yourself. So you, Virgo, are really going to want to know uh, what your values and principles are. Your core values, principles, core beliefs. This type of thing is going to make you really strong and able to defend yourself with ease. You're going to want uh, to exhibit a lot of integrity regarding your values, principles and core beliefs. Okay, because you are going up against Saturnian. So to defend against that, integrity will be very important. And you focus on that and you will, you will be able to defend yourself in any circumstance because you live in accordance with your own values, principles and beliefs. So actually an enemy will get you to enhance uh, your integrity like your integrity will go up um, as you interface with 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 enemies yeah that's that's really interesting virgo wow thank you so much for being here we are now going to welcome libra libra welcome thank you so much for joining all right libra so what have we got going on here oh i quite like your one your one is a, is a bit of fun here your best defense is in being light hearted. Okay, I really like your defense setup and I think it will suit who you are as well. Okay, because you are the diplomat. You put everyone at ease. So being light hearted okay will be a way of defending yourself the other thing is i've got here using lightweight and elegant summations so it's like you don't want to be verbose okay you're going to be really powerful in thinking so you definitely want to do some thinking <laughs> thinking and then sum things up in a clever one-liner. You know when someone just throws out a statement and it's just one little thing and everyone just goes, whoa, and it's like it just, it just calms everything down or people just, yeah, it's, you want to be doing some of that. 
Um, I've got here, don't be verbose, sum up your argument in one line. And another thing that's going to be great for you is humor. If you're able to disarm or diffuse the situation with a joke, uh, you um, in, in particular are going to be able to do that. Okay, you're either doing it in some clever one-liner or you're using a little joke or you're bringing it, you're making it light-hearted. You're making it light-hearted, you're making things easy, simple, you're simplifying as well. Oh, massively so, yeah. Simplify. Simplify the situation, simplify the arguments, make it easy. Uh, and yeah, you might find that you come out on top. Libra, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what do we have here, Scorpio? Oh, I remember your one. I like your one. Yours is very interesting. I like this a lot. Okay. Moksha energy, guys. Moksha energy. This is, I love it. We're in, we're in the, we're in the ultimate place here. I've got here, you will need to mature. You'll need to be the bigger person. We've got here an individual in terms of your enemies. We've got a fiery character, possibly. Who is an individual? Could be quite stubborn. But I've got here, you need to mature, you need to expand, you need to be the bigger person. And I've been thinking a lot about this statement lately. I know that Yogananda has been writing about it in a few places in his book, which I've been reading every night. It's called Man's Eternal Quest. It's a wonderful book. And he talks about, he quotes Jesus a lot, and he talks about turning the other cheek. And I've been reflecting on this and what this means and how this works. And it is the ultimate. It is the ultimate thing. It's like now, what do we have here? Cancer. Cancer is the mother. And this is why I say mature and be the bigger person. Because how you want to view your enemy is that they are a child. Okay. And that you as the mother will allow them, you think about the mother, the mother allows a baby to bite her, to vomit on her, to hit her and scream. And you know, when the baby's angry and the mother just, oh, just hugs the baby and goes, it'll be all right, you know. And even if you never received that as a child, Make it your determination that I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to mature. I want to be that bigger person who can do that. And that's really what turning the other cheek is. Turning the other cheek is just recently, I was, just today, I was watching some cute videos on, you know, those shorts videos. And there was this tiny little cat and the cat was like trying to scratch these big beautiful dog and the dog was just amused and letting the little kitty try to hit him you know and it's that kind of thing we're going for here it's it's like you expand you mature you allow that person to exhaust themselves in your space right it's not easy to do it is not easy to do this i know believe me but this is the goal Okay, so this is the thing. You want to have the goal of being able to be this person, right? So how, you know, that just, just consciously having that goal, how many people even do that work? A lot of people don't even do that. 
So you want to be doing that, right? You want to have that goal where you go, do you know what? I want to be like, yeah, like the mother that lets the baby exhaust itself or like that big dog that let the little kitten do what it did, you know, and the dog's just smiling kind of and finding it all amusing. Yeah, I mean, and obviously it's not, when we are, um, when we are feeling smaller than the other, okay, uh, I know that that is, that is, yeah, that, that's, that's where the pain comes from. So this is what I'm saying to you, that you got to get bigger, okay, and, and, and this can be work that you do not during the fight, um, or any of that or the disagreement or whatever it is that you're going through you do this work in in the off time in the off season in the you know when you're not when you're by yourself um, you do this work of having your goal who, who do I want to be in these situations and you you work at growing yourself into being that person it's a process it's not and it's not maybe an overnight thing but you can do it okay and you might need to you might really need to meditate on some of these things what does it mean to turn the other cheek what is that why what what did Jesus say when he said that what was he talking about you know and how as you contemplate that what, what does it mean to you how would you be able to make that happen Scorpio, it's a, it's, look, you, the potential for you here is moksha, okay? You're getting a chance to get off the wheel. So that's the great thing of your incarnation. Uh, and yes, it, work with this stuff and, and see how you go. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I want to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm checking the time. We're okay. How are you going to defend yourself? All right. Well, I've got here, you will find creative ways to defend your viewpoint. Creative ways to defend your viewpoint. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah. Your opponent is likely to be very stubborn. <laughs> uh, so I've got here that, yeah, you, you will want to make sure that you can um, that you don't back down. Yeah. What else do we have here? I just sort of want to... I mean, some of the other signs, I've covered this in some of the other signs, things about um, don't shrink. Or, or dull your shine. You might have to power up. You might have to be expressive. You might have to, but creatively so. Ah, I knew there was more here for you because I'm reading my notes down there and I'm like, oh, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't tackled this one. I know what you have to do. You can be entertaining. Sagittarius. When you are giving out your opinion, put on a show, entertain the people. You know, it's like you're, you're an actor, you're on stage. I love this. Yeah, make a thing out of it, do it. Look, and I mean, this person's going to appreciate it. They'll appreciate your artistry. <laughs> you might make a friend here. You will, you'll turn this enemy into They'll sign you up. They'll, I don't know, they'll, they'll put you in touch with 
well, Hollywood's not cool anymore, but I don't know, where, wherever people are going to be <laughs> actors or whatever it is, I don't know. But like, you can be entertaining actually. You can be entertaining and you can teach people something new as you express your viewpoint. So if you're in an argument or a fight or something like that, for you the goal wouldn't be to be clever or intellectual or to outsmart them, which you might think, you know, being a Sagittarius, you might think, oh, well, that, that's what I should do. I need to be more knowledgeable or more academic or quote the right thing or no, 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 you need to be entertaining. You need to be creative. You need to be watchable. <laughs> you need to be interesting um, or and, and like throw in random stuff and be creative and artistic and play with it. Have fun. Play. Oh gosh, yeah, my notes here are so thin. It came in the now, of course. Play. Have fun. Yeah, and but you know, it's funny because I was thinking, I was telling my mum about how like I was rehearsing, I was, I, was, I was having to meet with someone for battle myself recently and I was joking with my mum and I was saying, you know, I was, I was reciting some of my lines and I was like, some of these lines are quite good, like, yeah, this could be in a movie kind of thing, yeah, so it's like, but then I also watch myself and I think, well, what am I doing? Like, is this right? And I don't want to be a hero and all this kind of thing. Like, yeah, but it's so what, what character do you want to be? Who do you want to be? You get to choose. You get to reflect, but have fun and strive for, strive for being stylish and, um, and fun. And that when you replay it, or when, I mean, apparently we all replay everything. Apparently, we, you know, these near-death experience people, they say that we get to the end of life and we watch the whole damn thing again. So, I mean, I am conscious of this now. So I'm going to like try to, you know, and but also do we want to create something that's interesting for ourselves to watch again later? <laughs> Obviously, with no karmic implications. I know this is, this is very complicated stuff. It's difficult, I know. But maybe you can... I don't know, have fun with your role. Is that possible? Is that possible, Sagittarius? You can let me know in the in the comments below. Thank you so much. These, this is just some food for thought, guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, yes, I like your one very much, Capricorn. Now, with Leo, I had a quote for them. And the quote was quite fun to do. Now for you, I don't have a quote. I have a person. And the person who I have is a Capricorn ascendant, just like you, right? You might be a Capricorn moon here. You might be a Capricorn sun here. You might be doing a little bit more homework. But if you're a Capricorn ascendant, um, the fellow Capricorn ascendant person I had was Billie Jean King. And a long time ago, I remember watching a documentary about her uh, and I didn't know anything about her but this was in Sydney Australia when I used to watch TV this is how long ago this was and she apparently was you know a great tennis player but she was required to play against a man this was I think was this in the 70s it was a long time ago it was a very long time ago and she had to her opponent was a man and she's trying to strategize and think how am I going to, oh, the battery is flashing. Oh, how annoying. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the battery and come back. Okay, I'm back. So the story was she had to play against a man and she talked about her strategy as to how is she going to do this. Her opponent is a man. And she's like, the way I strategize is I decided, because she's like, there are certain shots that he could do, way more powerful shots that she knew she would lose against. So her strategy was, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lob the ball to the very back of the court. And I'm just going to keep lobbing it back there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust him. 
And that's what she did. And she won. That was her strategy. I'll keep him at the back of the court and I'll just exhaust his energy. How clever. And that is one of the things that I'm seeing you being able to do Capricorn because you've got this incredibly hardworking ascendant. You've got this incredibly hardworking Virgo here in your ninth house. So you, your strategy for defense is that you can actually quite literally exhaust your opponent. Now your opponent is mercurial. Mercury has a has a small little circle and you're a Saturnian, you got the big, the big powerful engine. Okay. So just, just press a little bit on your engine, you know, and you've covered more distance. Mercury's still going around in his tiny little orbit there. So you want to exhaust this one. And that is definitely um, a way that you can do this. So they're running the smaller, put his smaller circle. I recently watched a debate with George Galloway versus Christopher Hitchens. And this is a very good example to bring up here because Galloway is this Saturnian person here. He's got an exalted Saturn. And Hitchens is very mercurial. And it's, just, oh, it's such a great thing to watch. If you like watching debates, go and take a look at that one. Galloway versus Hitchens. It's incredible. And you can see the power of an exalted Saturn. Now, I will give Christopher Hitchens some credit. He's got an exalted sun. But he's very sun Mercury. And he's got an exalted sun. He's got, I think he's got an exalted Venus in his chart. But to watch the two battle it out, I mean... That exalted Saturn, Hitchens is no match. Like, and it, he he gets exhausted, he gets flustered, he starts he starts calling the audience names because he he realizes I can't call him names because that will just come straight back. So he doesn't even dare. He's like, I'm not even going there. But he, he then he starts l lashing out. He's you know releasing his frustration on the audience. It's just like, oh my goodness. Wow, it's, oh, you got to watch it. It's powerful stuff. But like the power of Capricorn is that you can out outlast your opponent. You can outrun your opponent because you've got that energy of you're going to keep going. You've got stamina right through to the end. So that's what you've got. And you can use that strategically and very masterfully, Capricorn. So that is what I have for you. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So what do I have here? Oh, yeah, this one's quite, this one's quite sweet, really. Uh, your best form of defense. Now, I did say this in the last video. Uh, you might be up against female opponents or enemies, right? But your way to defend yourself is actually to befriend people. It's also good for you to be neutral. In your stance perhaps you're quite neutral but you have a leaning it's a good idea you've also got the judge archetype here too isn't it judge so there's something about you that's quite neutral and I've also got that what will suit you is to utilize your empathy You might have quite a, an ability to be able to see the other side's point of view. 
you might even be able to help them or heal them <laughs> isn't that interesting so uh, yeah that is quite interesting wow I haven't got that written in my notes but it's just come to me in the moment and I do think that that is something that you can do Aquarius do I have anything else yeah I've got here talent for empathy will bring you the right strategy definitely but there is of all the different signs I do think you've got quite an ability to to see eye to eye with your opponent uh, yeah and quite an ability even to to lift somebody lift them up if they need lifting up Aquarius thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining now I have just realized Pisces that I said in the video that I only have one quote and I think I gave that quote in an earlier sign wasn't it who did I give that to I stand as 10,000 that was for Leo so I did have a quote for Leo and I think I said to one of the other signs there's only one quote oh, I think I said it to Leo there's only one quote and it's for you well I told a lie <laughs> I just discovered I have a quote for you and the quote is uh, maybe we'll get to the quote after the content how about we how about we look at the content first so how are you defending yourself and who are you defending yourself against well, you're defending yourself against someone who possibly has quite a strong sense of self. Uh, and I've got here, you can defend yourself. Now, yours is quite interesting. I like your one. You can defend yourself by holding back. A little bit so what are you doing you are holding back holding back your energy perhaps you're holding your cards close to your chest don't reveal what's going on <laughs> don't reveal, hold hold a little something back don't give it all away that's the that's the stuff we've got here so you're holding your cards close to your chest I've got here make them come to you and I've also got here you are perfectly within your rights to not defend yourself if you don't want to of all the different signs now at the start of the video I talk about Stuart Wilde and I talk about his quote where he says uh, the fool stands and fights but the sage walks away okay so that quote definitely applies to you but I've got another quote especially for you uh, and this quote so here I've got um, yeah you can disappear so I've got here disappear oh I can't even spell disappear is that two s's I'm not sure I think it might just be one whoops well very creative <laughs> spelling I've got there we'll just allow it um, yeah here on my handwritten notes don't you worry it's one s so I can spell I've got here it's moksha okay you got moksha energy in here And so you really have to be conscious because perhaps it's your goal that you don't want to incarnate here again, which I think is a great goal to have. I'm wanting to have that goal myself. <laughs> I'm reading Yogananda at the moment and I'm very inspired. I'm like, oh, how cool. I could never come back here. But I don't, I don't know. I feel like I've already done too many things. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, I haven't done that much stuff, but yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure I've done something. 
So, but like, I, I really think I've got here, you don't want to come back here, potentially. And if that's the case, you really do want to think about, do you even defend yourself? And this is the quote I have for you. It's Byron Katie. The quote is, defense is the first act of war. So Pisces, you really want to think about that quote. And you really want to think about is it worth it? it? Might not be worth it for you. All right. So have a think about that quote. I am going to leave it here. Guys, it has been such a joy to do this video today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it contains... I'll just press stop there. I hope it contains some good food for thought for you, just something to think about and contemplate as you look at your chart, as you study your chart. Let me know in the comments below how you got on. I would love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you next time.